This week I'll show you how to paint these gloriously bright fuchsia in watercolour. Hi, I'm Helen Campbell and in this video I'll show you with step-by-step -step instructions how to paint these flowers. Now they're not strictly botanical, I've simplified it so that you can all join in but the results will be amazing. I'll show you how to trace down the drawing in this i-card at the top of your screen. So grab yourself a coffee and a brush and let's dive in. So here is the colour chart that I used to help me select the colours for the tutorial that I'm going to paint today. And I'll put an information card on the top of the screen on how I made the colour chart to help me select the colours. The colours that I've chosen are Permanent Rose, Carmine, Quinacridone Magenta, Permanent Violet, Leaf Green, Sap Green and Perilean. first wash I'm going to apply is a watery mix of permanent rose along with a little bit of carmine. This helps give the base of the colour a really vibrant wash without it being too, too thick. It needs to be watery at this stage so that we can build up the layers. I've attached my paper to the board with some masking tape to stop it from buckling as I work through. I'm just applying this mix on the pinky tones within the plants. At the top here you can see me leaving a little gap which means this will be eventually become the highlight that we're going to paint around. Trying to keep as much realism as I can yet trying to simplify the process too. So all over the pinky areas that we can see in the reference photograph. By the way, the reference photograph and the line drawn for this tutorial I will put in the Facebook group and I will link everything in the description box below. Once I've applied the colour, you can see me cleaning my brush and patting it onto the kitchen towel and just gently blending it into the paper as shown. At this point, the brush needs to be just damp. I'm just adding a slightly thicker mix to the top here to add some dimension. Otherwise it can look a little bit flat. Continuing this process throughout the plant as shown and also adding a little bit of the same mix on the branch or twig as you can see at the top. I've now mixed a colour with the violet colour that we had in the beginning. I've decided to add a little bit of French ultramarine because I did feel that the purple colour wasn't quite blue enough on its own and I'm applying this to the bottom part of the petals as shown. Once I hit the pink tone, yet again I clean my brush in the water and pat it on the kitchen roll, blending the two colours together and repeating the process throughout the two base colours of the petals. Now I'm mixing some sap green with a little bit of magenta to get this kind of brownie colour that we're going to apply onto the, the branch or the twig. I've also mixed a little bit of magenta separately so that we can kind of merge the two together. It just gives it a better sense of realism by dropping in these two colours and just letting them naturally mix together. It doesn't have to be too accurate, but it just gives it a little bit more dimension than keeping the colour flat. Just using the tip of my brush to blur them together as shown. Just using the same mix to go over the leaves. 
repeating the process until that's finished. Going back to my Carmine and Permanent Rose mix and just making it slightly thicker to enhance the colours that we've already applied. Now that we have the base colour in place, it makes the job a lot easier that, so that we can see where we're going with each colour. You can see me using a damp brush here to blend the colours together as shown in the beginning. I'm not taking this tone everywhere, I'm just leaving some of the areas light to give dimension and form. Just gently merging the colours together with the tip of my brush, it being damp. And repeating this process throughout the pink areas of the plant. I'm still using my number three size spotter for this because it has a really sharp edge. Once again, working around the little highlight at the top leaving a gap and just blurring it together with a damp brush as before. I'm using a flat brush here because I felt I'd lost a little bit of the highlight, so I'm just lifting it out with a flat synthetic brush. Using the same mix to enhance the filaments as shown. I'm just adding in a little bit more of the pink tone at the top here and once again blending it into the blue tone. And repeating the process. As I'm painting I'm constantly looking at my reference photograph to see where I'm going and as I say I'll put the reference photograph along with a simple line drawing for you to trace down yourselves in the Facebook group. The mix I'm applying here is still the same, it's carmine along with a little bit of permanent rose. You don't have to use both colours, permanent rose will probably do on its own, it just gives it a little bit more depth. Again dropping in a thicker mix here. And once again blending them together with a damp brush. The top of the flower needed a little bit more colour, so as you can see, I'm painting this in and blending it as before. I have a weak mix of quinacridone magenta here just to go over the areas that I've left white. And once again building up that thicker layer on the outside edge here where it's slightly darker. Same mix, carmine and permanent rose and blending it in. It's all about building up those layers to create dimension and form. Because the paint is so watery, you can apply many, many layers without it going muddy. But it does have to be watery to begin with. Using the tip of my brush to outline the plant as shown here, once again working around that highlight. Repeating the process on the other side. Here you can see me mix sap green, with a little bit of quinacridone magenta. This creates a lovely burgundy colour. 
and the consistency is still fairly weak but I'm applying it to the top areas of the flower heads. Once again working around that little highlight. Taking the colour to the outside edge once again and blending it through. I felt that the pink tone was slightly too pink in certain areas so I've taken a wash of transparent orange over some of the parts just to brighten it up a little bit. You don't have to do this and if you don't have transparent orange use a yellowy tone in its place. It works just as well. In the end I decided not to use leaf green, I felt it was a little bit too bright. repeating the process. I've added a thicker mix of the blue tone with the purple tone to the basis of the flower heads as you can see and I've let this dry. I mix perylene green with a little bit of the violet colour. It doesn't matter whether it's the blue tone or the purple tone as long as it's dark. I'm applying this colour to the outside edge of the flower head here as shown. This creates a shadow and also it sharpens up the outside edge. Once again blending it in with the damp brush. So that's perylene green with either the violet or the blue, it doesn't matter. And using this tone to create form in the central part and again it also forms part of the, part of the shadow to help it look more realistic and less flat. Tonal value plays a huge part in botanical painting so that your paintings don't look flat and more realistic. These darker values really make it spring to life and jump off the page. Carefully working around the filaments like this. I'm just adding a little bit more of French ultramarine to the bottom part of this petal to give it a bit more realism and once again blending it through. Repeating the process on the other side. You can see how by outlining these little petals at the top and going underneath them with the same colour really makes it jump away from that flower head and makes it look more natural, creating a shadow underneath and a little bit of dimension to the top. But it's important that these colours are blended together with a damp brush as before. also using it to sharpen the outside edges of the plant.
blending together as I go through. If you are enjoying this tutorial and you'd like to know more about botanical painting, you may want to consider joining my Patreon online school and I'll put details in the description box below. Also, while I have your attention, you may want to consider subscribing to my channel. It really does help to support me and it's super easy to do. Now that I've worked through the flower heads themselves, I'm going back to the, the twig or the branch as before using the same mix, which is the green color, sap green with a little bit of permanent magenta or even carmine, it doesn't matter. Applying the color as shown and once again, using my damp brush to blend them through. Mixing and matching the colours as I go, dipping between the green tone and the, the purpley red tone. It doesn't matter as long as it looks realistic and it gives it more depth and more form. You can see how it's almost come into a sort of olively, olively green tone here, as you can see. I'm applying the darker tone to the inside edge and blending it out. It's mostly perylene with a little bit of magenta or red. When I say red, I mean the carmine colour that we had at the beginning. Not too fussy here, just making the colours jump out. I'm applying sap green to the leaves, but keeping some of the, the base color free from this tone and once again, blending them through. I'll repeat the process through the entire leaves. Until this part of the plant is completed. This is sap green with a little bit of perylene mixed in. Go into my number zero size brush to outline the filaments as shown. I'm using the grey mix that we made up earlier to do this, so I use a tiny bit of that just on the bottom part. I'm just making up colours for these because, like I said, I don't want it to be necessarily botanical accurate, botanically accurate. I just want you to have fun with it and enjoy it. So I'm just putting a darker tone here and then using the grey mix, which was one of the purple tones, the blue or the purple, with a little bit of perylene and green to make it dark and outline the entire thing with that, if that makes sense. I'm just using a really, really simple, really weak, watery wash or transparent orange, or you could use any of the colors here that you have on your palette in a watery consistency, just to fill in the tips here because they're too white at the moment. Going back to the burgundy mix to outline some of the filaments as shown to sharpen them up on the outside edges. And a little bit of transparent orange too. I'm 
Like I said, if you don't have transparent orange, use any orangey tone or you could even use burnt amber. I'm just completing the process throughout by picking up transparent orange with a little bit of permanent rose mixed in to sharpen up the petals as shown and repeating this process throughout the plant. I'm sharpening the outside edges just to make it really, really jump off the paper. Dipping between the colours on my palette as you can see. Just repeating the process throughout the plant until it's completed. Just making a few final adjustments with that brush as shown. If you like this video, you may also like to watch this video here where I show you how to paint this lily. Click through and I'll see you there.